Good evening, ladies and gents. We've got Director of Rugby of the Vodacom Bulls, uh, Mr. Drake White. We'll start with questions here on the floor. Uh, first question, please, Quibbers. John, um, not the greatest guy. Yeah. Yeah, Kubis. I mean, I just said to the players, no, we never get arrogant about you get nine points against the, the Lions in two weeks, considering where we were. You know, we would have taken that. You know, I mean, remember a week ago, two weeks ago, when we were coming into the change room here, you know, we, we had to find a way to, to get jump up the, up the log. So, yeah, I mean, I'm obviously like a bonus point, but we mustn't get ahead of ourselves. I think we had enough chances. We didn't score, and you know, we can't now. You know, look at look at the game. We'll have to. I mean, Kane and Moody Fox at the end. They kicks the ball out. I mean, Shane, guys, a nineteen-year-old guy. He says, when I asked him why did you kick it out, he says, I felt like I was isolated. You know. <laughs> so I mean, it's the right answer. You know, if he's on his own. There, he's probably thinking. You know. So yeah, I mean, it is it is it isn't it is an ideal. I'd like to have got a bonus point, especially not because it's the Lions, because we had set it up nicely to get a bonus point. That that's why I say. You know, so. But you know, I'm not going to get I'm not going to get too hard on the guys. Nine points in two weeks and jumped up the ladder. Now we have got massive game against the Sharks, and then we go to Zebra. So yeah, I mean, think we still got our destiny in our own hands as we go along. Jack, um, that that first quarter was was torrid for you guys. Um, obviously, you, you want to play expansively. You want to be ball in the hand. That, yeah. Did Did you feel though that sometimes the guys maybe didn't earn the right first to go one there a bit quick. Yeah, well, the interesting thing enough, you know, is uh, if Kirtley gets that pass away early on when he slips, there's an overlap. If Elric doesn't lose the ball in the tackle there and he makes a pass, there's an overlap. So if I go to the if I go to them and say, listen, please guys, be more direct, then they're never going to pass. You know, so yeah, I, I I thought I thought we played quite nicely in the beginning. We just didn't finish. I mean, there was enough opportunities. What we actually did, Ken, is we thought with a complete change in their back line and the personnel not understanding each other, if we could put them under pressure early, you know, there's no use getting conservative and let them grow in the game. So that was the thinking, you know, when we started the fixture. So I can't now say to you, no, no, we were wrong by, by pulling the trigger. I thought that was, you know, the more we could have put the outside backs under pressure because they all knew. Um, and I'm saying new as a combination for this week, the better it would have been for us. So, yeah, I, I still think that if Kurt Lee gets it, you know, gets away there and makes a nice pass, you know, Cannon could score. And then, as I said, Ulrich in the beginning when he was running there and he lost the ball in contact. Yeah, I think if he had shifted it there, it was enough numbers for us to, to get a little bit more game line down the side. You, you guys were under the pump of it in the scrums early on. And yeah. I think mean, you had a half a dozen handling errors, as you said, in the first yeah. 15 minutes. So. Yeah, I'm not so sure about the scrums, though, because, I, you know, a couple of weeks ago when we had Mornay Smith playing, they said there's a thing called cranking. And I thought cranking is when the prop goes like this and then like this and then like this. I thought you're not allowed to do that. You know? Well, we were told you're not allowed to do that. So yeah, obviously, maybe they forgot that law for a while today. <laughs> Similar. Uh, Jake, you did score three tries, and it must be frustrating enough to score yeah. that extra bonus on the try. Um, and having said what you've uh, just listened to, what you've said, uh, regarding Berkeley as well as your expansiveness in the yes. do, do you think to some extent they, they inhibited your play uh, as far as all, and your choices as far as looking towards them, they sort of, maybe it's sort of a strangled defense that they sometimes yeah. you know, executed. Yeah, I think, I mean, look, I think they, and they also did a very good job of making it as scrappy as possible yes. you know, off their feet and playing the ball on the ground. And, you know, getting turnovers like that, you know, I thought at times they didn't roll away from the tackle. I mean, there were about five or six phases we were going hard at their line and struggling to get the ball out the back of the rack. So, but, you know, I mean, let's be fair, that's that's how they played and, and they, you know, they came they came close to getting a result. So, yeah, I mean, I, I see when I just said to the players after the game as well, there's no use now saying this happened and that happened and, let, you know, let's, let's we're going we're gonna to play games like this again in the next couple of years. We're going to get you know, an official overseas that's going to ref differently or is going to interpret things differently. And we've got to find a way to be good enough to, to get a bonus point when we're in that situation or win a game when, you know, when, we, when we're under the pump. So, yeah, it's a, yeah, yeah, I'm sort of jumping around and saying that they, they, their style probably didn't allow us. I thought the rain came at a time as well. You know? If you consider we were 6-0 down for 20 minutes and at one stage we were, you know, we were 21-6 up. 
So that meant that in that, that sort of middle block of the game, we, we went like 21 nil. You can't be upset about that. I mean, we must have been doing something right. No, it took you 26 minutes to score the first Correct, correct. But then we had so many chances in the beginning as well, you know. Yeah. Thanks. Jacob, just in, not, not trying to take away, you know, from any other individual performances, but given that it was uh, the official match, match when Magosh came to the he was still pretty much a winger that was a finish up. He scored four tries for the Lions and scored up against yeah, them. Yeah. But um, in, a, in a more traditional sort of like game, like the sort of the conditions where the idea we have, are you, are you chuffed with his development as an all round winger now? Because he's a guy now that not just finishes and tries to make initiative, he does his basics well and he looks for work with him. Exactly that, Arms. I'm very happy with him. I and mean, I'm happy as well because he's starting to communicate. You know, I think when he got here, he was a little bit, I suppose, young and shy. And the more he's played and the more confidence he gets, now he talks. You know, and you get a guy like Kirtley at fullback or you get Kane and that's a youngster and he's and he's helping them, you know, with communication. So, you know, I mean, he, you know, as you say, you don't want to single out any players when you're a coach, but his growth has been significant. And I think everyone's seen that. So, you know, the challenge now is to make sure we keep improving him. But you know, I'm very happy that... Uh, he said to me one man of the match, I said, how do you get that without scoring a trial? But anyway, I mean, it's... Uh... <laughs> we'll take yeah. two more from as well. Yes. yes. You mentioned the, the shots, uh, looking at the lot. Currently, um, yes. it's falling down to a mini URC final for the South African team. I think you're right. I think you're right. You know, next week's a final. Um, because I think, you know, we've lost to them at home. We at their, at their place, we didn't get a point. And I mean, to be fair, you know, you got to, you got to, you got to win your derbies. And if you lose twice in a derby, then you know, it's like a little bit like the Heineken Cup. You play those six games when I was overseas. Once you lose two of those, if you lose the home and away one to somebody, you put yourself behind the eight ball. So yeah, it is. It's like a, I suppose it is. It's like a little mini final. We got to make sure we're good enough at home to beat them. Ken, okay. so just going back to Madosh. I think the last game here against the Storms, he had a, a really tough, a tough time in that game. But I guess it's it's proof again about backing guys and continuity and selection. Mm. That instead of saying, right, you had a bad game, you leave the out. Back to him and he's actually had two good two good games now. I guess it's yeah. not just simply that it applies to all yeah. of it. Yeah, okay. No, I'm, I'm, you know me a long time. I'm big on, on keeping the team together as long as I can. I mean, obviously, you want to make some changes to keep the energy levels up and, and give some players hope. You know, there's no use never picking someone. I think all players just want to have a bit of hope. You know, they don't want to train and train and then never get the chance. So, you know, you've got to balance hope for a player, but you also got to try and find a way that you can stay cohesive. And you know, one of the examples I use week in and week out is Lionel and, and Harold must have played... You know, you know, I want to almost say 100 games together. They've played three Super Rugby finals. I mean, the hours they've probably practiced together in the time that they were contracted at the Lions and yeah, is, is much bigger than, I suppose, any centre combination in South Africa. And that gives us confidence. You know, it gives the players confidence, gives the team confidence. And I'm sure it helps for a guy like Madosh as well. You know, man of the match outside those two centres and a guy like Mornay who's, you know, been in the stadium for so many years. I think it helps a lot of those players when you keep that sort of cohesion going as well, you know. So, you know, that's, it, I think it, there's, it's a spin-off of, of everything, I think. We'll go to the guys online. Uh, Ashfaq, you up. Hi, Jake. Um, you spoke earlier about the, the attacking intent. Um, that you must actually be happy with the fact that the guys actually pushed the envelope. You know, they tried things and, yes, the execution wasn't there and, and the wet weather contributed to that, but... Uh, just uh, the mindset. Yeah, that's right. That's what I was saying earlier. You know, I, I, I challenged them a bit this week and I said, you know, once we got to to see their backline, I said, well, look, guys, if they're not going to, you know, have a backline that's settled, then the only way to put them under pressure is to have a go at them, you know. And, uh, you know, we had a go and we knocked a few on. Kurtley lost the ball in the contact and, you know, I think a couple of times we could have maybe built a little bit more pressure, but you know, what I don't want is to go back in our shells and, and then just start playing conservative rugby and, you know, kicking the ball and, and hoping for a mistake. So, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's, it's pleasing, but I'm sure that as we get it, as we get to play better and better, and as we play together more and more often, then at least then, you know, we probably see some more signs of, of where we want to go as a group. Because uh, I just want to follow that up. Obviously, the bigger picture is becoming title contenders. And you've spoken about Leinster and the other Irish sides. 
who are really at the top of their game. What will it take to, to get to that point? Um, perhaps just a bit more, bit more patience with ball in hand and, and yeah. handling weather, referees, all those kind of things. Yeah, the one thing that is going to take is time. And, you know, I don't want to sound philosophical, but you can't speed up time. So it takes time. I said this week, Crusaders came last in 96 in the Super Rugby competition. They ended up becoming the most dominant Super Rugby team through the lessons they learned. You couldn't fast track. You know, Ruan Nokia is young. You know, Krobis is young. You know, you got that, I mean, I say it every week to you. Ulrich is young. You know, and I'm saying young age-wise and experience-wise. This is a completely different competition to what we used to. And... Uh, and I know we're playing local derbies, but still, I mean, the reality is the, the margins are so small. I mean, today we were, you know, 20 minutes away from getting a bonus point. And who knows, maybe that bonus point comes back to bite you. But, you know, we've uh, we got we to gotta make sure that next year when we have a group that's a bit older and have a group that's been in those situations, they learn from them. Any other questions? Sorry, Jumani. I'm, I'm, Coach. Um, Jack? Can I get a little bit of 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 Moet jy seker maak, die anders van kry nie meer as 21 nie. So, ja, ek is, soos ek sê, ons is, ons is nie tevrede dat ons nie een bonuspunt wil kry nie, maar ek wil nie ook arrogant wees nie. Jy weet, uh, dis uh, een nieuwe span, dis een uh, nieuwe uitdaging vir hulle, twee weke terug was ons, jy weet, onder druk, hierdie, jy wist kielik, twee weke kry ons negen punte, um, uit, uit twee games uit, en die Sharks, I mean, was vier punte weg om te verloor tegen die, tegen die uh, Lews, en hulle die stommers gewen op, 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 jy weet, in die kaap. So, I mean, wees jou net hoe, hoe hierdie toernooi is, en dit is, is nie makkelijk nie. So, ek kan net ook vir vraag, vraag um, um, in een aandeling van, van Aswaks gevraag, as jy tevrede met waar jou span is, en nou huidiglik in die competitie? Uh, nee, ek dink nie coaches as, as, as ooit tevrede waar hulle is nie, jy weet, hulle moet boe op die liga wees, wees en dan is jy gelukkig, maar so as ek sê, ons is, ons is nog steeds bezig om ons span by mekaar te kry. Um, ja, ons het, ons het baie, baie mense wat nie beskikbaar vir ons is nie. Jy weet, Jacques Duplessis is nie nie, Sintu Manjezi is nie nie, Monai Smith is nie nie, uh, Goosin is nie nie. So, I mean, op die einde van die dag, jy weet, ons is nou bezig om, om diepte in ons anders, om in ander posities en specifiek in die posities te bou. Last question online, any takers? Okay, Gus, you had a question? Check out what you have on the cast from the world, where the world and week is. We scry the, we do the perceptions, we scry the idea that we see the respect that the confidence from the moment of the moment, we say it's not soft start, soft start. Yeah. And we see the amount of the idea of the guy. Yeah. As the old suits, last time you get to blast it, so that it's going to be a lot of the game. Yeah. Yeah. Who are the old suits? Come back, answer the question, not to say it's not perception. Yeah. Yes, okay. okay. <laughs> so last, last one, then we call it time. Okay. Um, Jake, what was just, just on that, you know, without, without going into detail, I know it was an incident that, that didn't necessarily have a material effect on the game itself, but that clean out of Mark Rousseau on Chromis, for example. Yeah. Now, it, it doesn't really matter what, what the thought process was in, in this game now, but I mean, yeah. in Europe, that probably is going to be a car, but... Is that is that the type of discrepancies or for, uh, discrepancies in philosophies between us and the northern hemisphere that makes it difficult for you guys, or is it just another case of what we have to adapt? I'm not I, sure. I, and the answer to that is exactly that. Is it is exactly like that, and you've got to be good enough to adapt to whatever happens. You know, you can't you can't carve a spilt milk. I mean, the reality is well, and I use an example. Uh, there's a kick into the ingle area. Harold Forster is about to go and run and score, and the player runs into the pole, bounces off, and runs into his way. When he's on his way to the ball, and he gets penalized because he ran into the guy that got bumped off the pole. So, I mean, 
what I'm saying is, where, where does that, now there's no use. I mean, what happens? Where is he supposed to go? If he had ran and hit that guy into the pole, probably would have got carded, you know? So, yeah, as I said, I mean, it's, it's so many things that happen. And, I, and, I, and, I, and as I said, as a group, we appreciate that. And I think anybody just wants consistency like that. You know, we don't want a situation where if we're in the same situation, it gets seen differently, you know? I mean, if you, I use that example with Harold. How do you go from almost scoring to giving a penalty? Where, I don't understand. You know I mean, I don't understand where he was supposed to go. I mean, he's trying to get the ball. He's running towards the ball. The ball's between the uprights. Someone's picking it up. I mean, I don't know. As I said, for me, there was no common sense about how that was adjudicated from everybody, from the TMO to the... At one stage, I thought we were going to get a penalty because he actually blocked, he blocked the player getting to the ball carrier, which, you know, in, in the rule book is obstruction. And it's blown at kickoff time when you're running the way of a guy when he's trying to get to the ball catcher. So, but I, I'm stressing on the basis that that's the frustration and, and we've got to be good enough to actually find a way to, to take that out of the game. And, and to be fair, we did. We had enough opportunities without those two things to actually get a bonus point and, and do the job. So, yeah, I don't, want to, I don't want to now point fingers at anybody. We'll look at ourselves. Thanks very right. much, Coach Jake. Thank you very much, gents. Thank uh, have a good Thanks, evening. Thanks, guys. Thanks.